Hi, I'm Dr. Michael Chua with Puente Hills Eye Care, and in this video, I'll discuss thighs, what they are, what causes them, and how we can treat them. And stick around until the end of the video because I'll also review some tips on how you can prevent them. So what are styes and chalasia? They're both red, swollen bumps that can grow on the island, so patients may sometimes confuse the terms, but there are some differences between the two. Let's review some eye anatomy so we can explain what these conditions are. We all have small glands in the eyelids called meibomian glands. They release oil into the tears, which helps to lubricate the eye and prevent tears from evaporating. Sometimes these glands can get clogged or blocked, and the glands are unable to release their oily secretions. This can lead to a local inflammatory reaction, which can cause a tender red lump to appear on the eyelid. This is a chalazion. If these glands or nearby hair follicles become infected, then there can be a bigger inflammatory reaction surrounding the lump, causing further redness, swelling, and pain. These are styes. Okay, now that we reviewed what styes and chalazia are, let's review the most effective treatments for them. The most common treatment for styes and chalazia is warm compress. Like we mentioned before, clogged meibomian glands are the most common cause for chalazia. Normally, the secretions from meibomian glands should have the consistency of a light olive oil, but when they become blocked, the secretions can have a consistency more similar to butter. By applying warm compress with gentle massage, we can soften the secretions inside the glands and help them to drain. Oftentimes, with enough warm compress, patients will see that their chalazia begin to drain pus and oil, and then decrease in size after the glands become unblocked. I found that the most effective warm compresses are the gel hot packs you can find in any pharmacy. You put them in the microwave for about 20 to 30 seconds, Test it to make sure it's not too hot, then place it gently over both eyes for about 15 minutes. It also helps to gently massage the eyelids while applying the warm compress to help tease out any oily secretions from the glands. Usually, I recommend patients do the warm compress four to six times a day. Another treatment option for chalazia are eye ointments. Doctors often prescribe combination steroid and antibiotic ointments such as Maxitrol or Torbodex to be used on the chalazian to help decrease the swelling. Long-term use of steroid ointments can lead to side effects such as early cataract formation or increased eye pressure, so make sure to follow your doctor's instructions on proper usage of these ointments. The next treatment option for chalazia is surgical excision. This involves using a blade to make a small cut into the lump and to clean out any pus, secretions, or debris. Oftentimes, eye doctors can flip the eyelid and make the incision on the inside of the eyelid so that you won't have a visible incisional scar on your eyelid. The procedure only takes a few minutes and is done in the office. The eye may be a little bit swollen and puffy for the first few weeks after the procedure, but this usually improves. The last treatment option for chalazia is a steroid injection. For chalazia that are smaller and don't appear to be infected, doctors can inject a small amount of steroid into the chalazia. This usually makes the lump go away over the course of a few weeks. Depending on the type of steroid that's used, one possible side effect of this procedure is that it can cause discoloration at the site of the injection. This is usually more common in patients with darker skin color, and most of the time, the discoloration goes away over the course of weeks to months. But in some cases, it can be permanent. Okay, now that we covered the most common treatment options for styes and chalazia, let's review some of the risk factors and some lifestyle changes you can make to prevent them. If you wear makeup, make sure to wash it off completely every night before going to bed to avoid clogging your meibomian glands. If you are prone to getting chalazia and styes, Perform warm compress twice daily to prevent your chalazia from forming. Dust and allergies can cause inflammation in the eyelids and increase your risk of getting styes. So if you're struggling with recurrent styes, try to identify any allergies you may have and reduce your exposure to them. Some common allergies include dust, mold, pollen, and pets. Sleep deprivation and stress have also been associated with the development of chalazia. So improving your sleep hygiene and reducing stress may help to prevent more chalazia from forming. I hope this review of styes and chalazia was helpful to you. If you found the information in this video useful, please give us a like and subscribe to my channel for any future updates. And if you live in the Los Angeles, Orange County, or Inland Empire area and want to get checked out for chalazia or sty, feel free to visit our website or give our phone number a call to make an appointment today. I'm Dr. Michael Chua with Puente Hills Eye Care. See you next time.